of his masculinity and his bravery in front of some kind of class. He bounced up against this plate glass window, uh, maybe trying to, you know, have some fun. And he did it repeatedly and, and had no problems. And then he did it again, and this time he simply went through. And down this guy goes, falling 24 floors from his office to the ground, and he promptly dies. <laughs> Our task is to, uh, is to prove uh, whether this is possible or not. So what are the elements we're going to need to, uh, to replicate this? Well, we're going to need a, a, a pane of glass. We've got to build a, um, a mock-up body. We have to create some sort of a track and, and a mean, means of loading, uh, uh, loading the, this, this dummy body. We'll probably use some, uh, I've got a bunch of surgical rubber tubing that we can make a big slingshot. Okay. And we'll have to uh, also rig various ways of measuring so we're consistent about it, what, what, how, how much force we're putting on him. Right. I mean, the figure we want to come up with is whether or not it's possible for a person running at a reasonable clip into the window is, has enough pounds of force behind him to actually break the window. The first reaction is complete disbelief. And then the second reaction is, well, I heard that happened in New York or, or Moscow or, or Hong Kong or something like that. It's, it's just one of those stories that uh, seems to have kind of gone around the world. First, we need to decide what kind of track it is, uh, whether we want... I, I'm thinking that we should roll it along the ground kind of track rather well, you've than got hang that, it. Uh, you've got the great uh, the dolly track with the skateboard wheels. Okay. It's got a really low friction. I've only broken one bone in my body. My neck. So, how to build a lawyer. We're going to assume that this guy wasn't a fat cat. We'll make him, say, 160 pounds. Well, they're going to be about, call them 20 pounds a piece. They're 20 pounds each, so it's going to be, uh, it's going to be eight. Now I'm about to weld a steel frame that'll hold up the, uh, hold up the sandbags to distribute their mass roughly like a, like a person's body. These wooden blocks will stop our lawyer from falling backwards when he accelerates. But he'll be free to fall when the cart stops at the end of the track. Hey. On to the next task, finding the right pane of glass. Something that would be suitable for the 24th floor of a skyscraper. It's normally a thickness um, you know, which is greater than the, the, the thickness that you see in house glass. You're talking about six millimeter or ten millimeter. At three quarters of an inch, this four foot by eight foot pane seems to be the standard size. So we successfully have a piece of glass for the falling lawyer. Thanks. I think I'll build the frame out of just plywood, and we'll seal it up with some caulk, just just like you would in an aquarium. And uh, and we may want to uh, we'll we'll put the uh, the uh, tempered glass in the front. Look at that. Ready? Uh, yeah, okay. Oh, could have counted three. Glass comes in sealed units. And they're set into, into recesses in frames. So that they're supported around the total perimeter, usually. Our frame won't just support the glass. It'll also allow us to reproduce some of the forces at work inside tall buildings. And then we also have to th uh, think of things like, uh, you know, if there's, there's pressure in the building or uh, um, that would either tend to, you know, make things different. Inside of a building, there's a lot of things happening. There's mechanical equipment, which is exhausting, exhausting air, and there's mechanical equipment, which is pushing air into the building. And if you don't get the same amount of air going out as you're pushing in, then you start to build up pressures within, within the building. This stack effect is just 1.47 pounds per square inch. But we think that's going to be crucial. Because the glass has, you know, it's like 4,600 square inches, the amount of force, there's not much of a... Yeah, well, you wouldn't think so, but uh, it, it's a funny thing about pressures like that. Uh, it, uh, when you're thinking in terms of PSIs and so on, it, it adds up, even a... a 
very small fraction of a PSI times 4,600 starts to get into, you know, a thousand pounds. Oh, right, about. across the whole face of the glass. Yeah. So it could have uh, played a significant factor in the windows breaking on that particular day. 4,600 pounds of pressure is definitely something we want to factor in. So that means that our frame that the uh, that the window is going in actually has to to be a like chamber, a chamber. Right. Oh, okay. right? We'll seal it off in the back, and we'll hook a, a vacuum or a pressure pump on, uh, up to it. Jamie doesn't have a pump large enough to increase the air pressure in the shop. Instead, he'll reproduce the stack effect by sucking air out of the chamber. This pump is too powerful. It's threatening to rip the plexiglass out of the chamber. Uh. And our vacuum gauge isn't sensitive enough. You know what I think we should do is that uh, we should just rig our own gauge in terms of inches of water. I believe inches of water is going to be a lot more sensitive than inches of mercury because it's a lot lighter than what mercury is. I mean, it's literally, we put a tube in there, yeah. like a U-shaped tube. It's just like a barometer. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. that's the kind of scale that we're dealing with is, uh, is like, you know, barometric pressure. Right. It'll be an interesting thing for us to know. We just, with a tube of water, we'll get all the sensitivity we want. All right. So, uh, it should be about four inches of water for the, uh, for the minimum. Uh, uh, no, no, no. Oh, point, oh, point yeah, you're right. Three. So, you're right. That's magnificent. We've rigged this leaf blower to suck. Hooked up to a variable switch, it should also be easier on the plexiglass. Armadillo. There we go. All right. You want it? Okay. I'll tell you when we're. Let's see here. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's beautiful. We got sensitivity, baby. Keep going. A little, little more, a little more, a little more. Scotty, I need power. You want more? More! More? More! Three inches of water! Yes! Little more! Ah, that's it! Is that it? That's it, 0.145 negative PSI. We've proved the principle. Now, with the addition of some glass tube, a scale, and food dye, we have a working gauge. Mr. Savage, if Miss I could suggest that you put a drop of the coloring in there first. No, I was thinking I'd put it in after and then I'd go and oh, like okay. fix it up. I thought that would be kind of cool. Ah, okay. With the stack effect problem solved, it's time to rig the slingshot. <laughs> we'll rig our, our slingshot somehow on, you know, we can tie to the side of the shop or right. something like that. So I was thinking for to figure out his velocity, to figure out how fast he's traveling. We don't have a radar gun or anything like that. I was thinking we could uh, take some flats and actually grid them, okay. and then uh, shoot from the side with one of the cameras, like, which give us uh, you know 25 frames per second, uh, and then we can uh, you know slow mo through the tape. We can frame by frame through the tape and see exactly how fast that he's traveling. Finally, everything's in place. Three yards, that's my bet. I'll guess that it's going to go five yards. Five yards? <laughs> this would be cool if I could see. There Look we at go. that. All right. First run from one yard. Nothing. Three yards. Here's my five bucks going to hell. Penalty, five yards. <laughs> 160 pounds at three Set. miles per hour. Oh. Our lawyer just isn't cutting the mustard. We got one more yard. I well, think we're going to end up going to two bands. What do you I think? I think we're going to end up going to two bands, too. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? Ready. All right. Two 
two yards. Go. Three yards. Go. Even with two elastic bands, our lawyer is still coming off second best. This is contacting here, and all of this is is bowing backwards. Right. And uh, as this comes in for a second, and then uh, you know, so it, it it really is. All these things aren't really making contact. Five yards. Here we go. Boom. All right. Okay. Yeah. Are you yep. Ready. Ready. And Two, three, go. It is possible that. It's not possible for a person to throw himself through the window. Entirely plausible, but... We will make it through this I window. want to make it through the glass. <laughs> but it may not be possible for a human to do that by himself. I'm Bruce Tamara. I'm a reporter at the Toronto Star, and you're watching Mythbusters. So far, we haven't had much success getting our lawyer friend to smash the glass. But Jamie's working on a hunch. I'd be inclined to put all the steel bags or all the sandbags up high. Yeah, exactly. I mean, starting Just, here. Yeah. You know, two, four, six, eight. Redistributing so the weight up we high did, uh, will concentrate the impact. Something. Meanwhile, our structural engineer is working on a different theory. Glass is an unpredictable material, uh, and although we use it uh, and we we see it p performing very well in thousands of cases there are certain things which will cause it to act in a way we don't expect. All right, so this is uh, one yard, two, three, go. If there's nicks in glass, it tends to cause what are called stress razors, and so you can break the glass with less force than you would a piece of glass that isn't nicked. Two yards. One, two, three, go. That seems better. It's feeling pretty sturdy. Yeah. Probably a thousand times, nothing will happen. But you're dealing with a very brittle material, and it doesn't give you any warning. It doesn't bend like steel. It doesn't bow like wood. It just goes kapump, and then you're out on the street. Three yards. Ready? Ready. Two, three, go. <laughs> that was spectacular. <laughs> it worked. It did from three yards. <laughs> I won myself five bucks. <sighs> wow. Yeah, the distribution of mass made a huge difference. Yeah. Listen to it. It's like Rice Krispies. That didn't look too fast to run at all. Yeah, it that wasn't excessive. Very reasonable. And 160 pounds up on the torso yeah. into a window with negative pressure. Nice. <laughs> yeah, it's not that far at all. Our lawyer covered 10 feet in 1.8 seconds, which works out at uh, 5.7 miles per hour. <laughs> You jump like the bat landed in your hair, dude. <laughs> Even if it's double, there's seven miles per hour. It's well within a human's ability to run. And uh, it seems totally possible with that pressure that he could have broken the window. I'd, I'd agree. It looked like what I, probably the kind of speed I'd get up to if I was lunging at the wall. You know? Yeah, especially with only three yards of start. You know, it's only nine feet. You can't really get up that fast. And this is absolutely a true story. Uh, it happened at this location, in this, at this office tower behind us. The coroner who investigated the incident decided not to hold an inquest because it was such a freak accident and uh, it, it would be extremely rare to imagine someone else doing the same thing purposefully. That was fun? Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> I like breaking things. Yeah, breaking things is cool. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.